So this is the second part of the homework video. And for this, I want you to get your textbook because uh, I did not assign you to do discussion question number nine. And uh, the reason I didn't assign it is because I always do that one during class. It's one of them that we do a little class exercise with. Well, since we don't have a live class right now to do it, uh, I'm gonna read through it. I want you to read through it in your book. I want, I'm gonna pause and let you think about things for a minute. And then I'm gonna talk about what the right answer is. So number nine says, true or false, if it's false, explain why. So statement A is, the total public debt is more relevant to an economy than the public debt as a percentage of GDP. What do you think? Hopefully you're saying that's, that's false. Uh, that the bottom line here is that uh, the United States has a huge public debt, much larger than any other country in the world, uh, but the public debt is currently, well, as of last year, about 105% of our GDP. It's probably gonna wind up at 110% of our GDP by the time this is all over, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, but the real question is, can our economy thrive enough to service the debt? Service the debt means paying the interest that comes due every three months on all of those uh, bonds that are the public debt. So it's much more important what the size of the public debt is rel relative to the GDP as a percentage of the GDP. Okay, letter B, an internally held public debt is like a debt of the left hand owed to the right hand. What do you think? Left hand owed to the right hand. Okay, so this statement is true. It's about uh, the national debt held internally. As you read in the chapter, chapter 33, a huge um, uh, number of the bonds that are outstanding are actually owned by various departments of the federal government. So the federal government owes the money to itself. A lot of the other bonds are held by the Federal Reserve Bank, which technically is an independent agency, but for all intents and purposes, we consider it to be part of the uh, uh, federal government also. So that is the federal government owing the money back to itself, uh, making those interest payments and, and ultimately paying those bonds off, retiring them, uh, just uh, is, is the money going from one branch of government to another branch of government, from the treasury uh, to whoever holds it. Um, so numbers, letter C, the Federal Reserve and the federal government agencies hold more than three-fourths of the public debt. True or false? Well, three fourths is a heck of a lot. That's 75%. And no, that's false. They don't own that much of the public debt. Uh, in 2009, it was uh, only 43% of the public debt was held by the Federal Reserve and the federal government uh, agencies. Um, I think it's a, about that nowadays. <clears throat> Letter D. The portion of the U.S. debt held by the public and not held by government entities was larger as a percentage of GDP in 2015 than it was in the year 2000. What do you think? What did you remember reading? And in 2015, that was before, uh, uh, well, the debt was pretty large in 2015, but uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it is true. The public debt uh, was uh, probably about 48 or so percent of the GDP, 46% uh, of the GDP in 2009, um, and uh, less than that, uh, probably around 35% uh, of the GDP in 2000 or so, uh, back in 2000. Okay, um, letter E, as a percentage of GDP, the total U.S. public debt is the highest such debt among the world's advanced industrial nations. What do you think? And this one is false. In terms of the public debt as a percentage of GDP, for the U.S., it's about 105% nowadays. Uh, 
Britain is much higher than that. Uh, Italy is way higher than that. They're at 300% or so, 250%. Japan is at 200% of their GDP. So there are several countries out there who have a, uh, a debt to GDP ratio that is significantly higher than the United States. All right, uh, problem number one, and everybody did very well on it. Problem number one uh, is about the difference between the spending multiplier and the tax multiplier. So every time you hear me say the regular multiplier in past videos, or if I say that again in future videos, what I mean is the spending multiplier, the multiplier that uh, we usually think of as applying to additional spending by the federal government that it wasn't already doing, but the spending all multiplier also uh, multiplies additional spending by businessmen, investment spending that they weren't already planning. Uh, and additional spending by consumers that they weren't already planning on doing. So any time there's additional spending and additional spending by foreigners in terms of buying our exports, the spending multiplier applies to all of those. The tax multiplier applies only when the federal government is either increasing taxes or decreasing taxes. And your book gives you a very good explanation of that, that you have to multiply the size of the tax increase or decrease by the MPC. That tells you how much consumption is going to change as a result of either the increase, gotta get rid of that, uh, is either the increase in GDP, uh, increase in taxes or the decrease in taxes. And then the multiplier applies to that change in consumer spending. A real shortcut to that that always works is the tax multiplier is the spending multiplier, the regular multiplier, minus one. Okay? All right. And that works on the AP exam too, I believe. All right. That ends the homework quest uh, videos here.